and Indian cooking made simple. We'll talk with the Chicago author of a new book on making traditional Indian dishes in a slow cooker. All that and more next on Chicago Tonight. Thanks for joining us. Here's what's happening in Chicago tonight. And reviving a 1970s cooking method with Indian flair. You may recognize our next guest. She used to be a reporter and anchor for CLTV and WGN-TV. In fact, she was one of the first Indian-American news anchors in Chicago. Since leaving her job, Anupi Singla has taken a bit of a career turn to Indian cooking. And here to talk about her new book, The Indian Slow Cooker, 50 Healthy, Easy, Authentic Recipes, which is number one on Amazon's Indian cookbook list, is Anupa Singhli. Anupa, welcome to Chicago tonight. Thank you, Phil. And congratulations on this dramatic uh, change in, in careers. First of all, why did you write this book? Well, that's a, a great question. Um, why did I decide to cook day in and day out is probably um, the bigger question. Sometimes I ask myself that as well. Had two little girls doing the morning shift at CLTV. Never got to really feed them the way I wanted and the way I ate when I grew up. I was born in India, raised outside of Philadelphia. And I thought, every child's legacy should be good food. And what am I doing to these kids? I'm fitting them mac and cheese and easy stuff because I was so tired. Uh, I read in the book where your mom uh, saw that and she was kind of appalled at, uh, at what you were feeding them. But why use a slow cooker? I take it slow cooking is not an Indian tradition. Well, in a way, it actually is. So I grew up visiting my dad's village in Punjab, India, and they've got the clay ovens out in the in the um, corridors of the buildings, the Haveli, and that's where they put some of these dals, some of these lentils on to cook, and they cook for hours and hours, kind of I like see. the old versions of the slow cooker idea. So you were just uh, sort of bringing it up to date in terms of instead of using fire, you used uh, you used what crock pots? Exactly. And I understand that at one point you had you would have in in writing this book and coming up with recipes, you would have ten crock pots going? That's a lot of crock pots. We've assessed that I own probably about a dozen slow cookers <laughs> in my house, um, all in the basement, um, lined up against the walls. Exactly. We had those um, crock pots going and I had to basically get rid of all that food. Um, and that's what we try to do with a lot of taste testers throughout Chicago. Uh, emailing and texting me as to what recipes they wanted to try. I'd stick them up on my blog and um, they check that out in a day and text me and say I want this. They come over with their containers and basically go to the blog and give me feedback. And that's how I made some changes in terms of the dishes in my book as well. And uh, one of the things that uh, the stereotype about Indian cooking is that it requires a lot of preparation, a lot of time for the different ingredients. But in your book you say that actually using the slow cooking method that really cuts down on the preparation time. How so? Well, there was a couple of changes that I made. Traditional Indian cooking is made, um, you say that you're making lentils, you'll make them on the side and on the other side, on another burner, you'll heat the oil, put the onions in there, some of the cumin and some of the spices, and then infuse the dish with all of that. What I did was a little different. I tried it by putting everything in at once, just to see. Could Does I that really work? It actually works, and um, it's it's very surprising to a lot of people that are used to that traditional type of Indian cooking. It surprised myself, my husband, even my parents. I had to convince, and so the um, impact on flavor was actually uh, was it was just as good. Was it ever better in any cases? You know, in some cases it was because it sat and it sat and it sat and it cooked for all those hours, and all of those spices break down and they infuse the dish and. Uh, Indian food oftentimes tastes so much better the next day, and so you kind of have that feeling <laughs> after cooking it like that. The other thing you point out in the book is that slow cooking reduces fat. How does slow? I mean, how does that work? Why does it reduce uh, uh, fat? Uh, whereas the traditional method retains it. Well, it's not that it retains it or, or reduces it. It's just you up to you, the chef. And so if you can get those flavors without adding the oil. Oh, I see. Or the cream. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I never disagree with adding a little bit of, you know, oil and creams as long as it's used in moderation. But at the same time, if you don't need to use it, um, our South Asian community is one of the highest incidences of heart disease. Out of many communities, many don't realize that. And so this was really for my father, my father-in-law, a lot of uncles that have um, actually suffered heart disease in their lives. And this was a way to kind of show them, here's a different way of cooking your traditional meals. Now, I understand you brought, the, there are some tr traditional spices that are used in Indian yes. cooking. You brought yeah. some with you. Uh, if you'll hand it to me over here, what, do you, what did you bring? This is a traditional spice box. It's my take on it. We actually patented a new design on it where it's got little 
little, um, you'd almost call them um, catches. And so you can wow. actually. I, it just it just started. <laughs> you can smell up. it, right? <laughs> it's very rich. It sure is. And this is how we cook. We keep everything just contained. The main um, seven to eight to nine spices we used on a daily basis, we keep them in this. And thus, you can actually pull those little containers out of the big one take it over to your dish and dole it out with a measuring spoon. And I came up with standard measures in mine. I see. Um, and again, we patented the design, went to India. My husband and I landed there last year and just looked for someone to make that for us. And they, they were able to do that. Uh, what are some of the most common uh, common spices? I recognize a sure. couple I recognize. This is cumin, it appears yep, to me. Cumin. What, what, yep. cumin. What, what else do you have? Sure, we've got red chili powder. You've got garam masala. Garam masala is just simply, garam means hot, masala means spices. It's a combination of spices. I buy ground, um, ground already and sometimes uh, whole spices to mix myself. Ground coriander, turmeric, which has become a really popular little spice, and then black salt, which is um, one of my favorites, actually, that most people don't even know about, but it's like a um, rock salt. You have a uh, favorite recipe in the cookbook. Which is it? Uh, one of my favorites is rajma. My young girls what is love it, it. Rajma. Rajma. Which is the Punjabi curried red beans, kind of like the equivalent of red beans and rice. Um, but you add cloves, cinnamon, and um, other spices in there, and it gives you this amazing texture and flavor to your red beans. You know, as I look at this, uh, as I look at this beautiful display of spices, uh, one, of, one of the questions that pops to my mind is, I, I, how hard are these to find? I mean, if somebody wants to follow the recipes, get the ingredients in your book, uh, how easy is it to do? Does Jewel carry it? Does Dominic <laughs> carry it? They do carry some. So the turmeric is becoming more and more popular. Um, the cumin, like you had stated, you've seen that, and that's become more and more popular. But some of the other spices you're going to have to hunt around for. Whole Foods does carry the garam masala. I saw it there. You can go to the Vaughn as well, and they'll have everything from the black salt to the turmeric to everything else, and at very, very um, cheap prices compared to some of these other places. <laughs> so that's another option. In the book, you also talk about the influence of, of your family, particularly your mother. You say you wrote it for her because, uh, because of all the information she shared with you. Tell me about that. Right. So back in the 70s, she was struggling with work, and she was trying to get Indian food on the table. A, f a coworker of, her fr of hers introduced her to the slow cooker, and she was making, you know, chicken noodle soup or something like that, and that's obviously not something that we grew up eating. So my mother thought she'd modify it, and the the beauty of it is, the modification meant you can make um, lentils and beans that normally take hours upon hours to make. Instead of using canned varieties, you can use the fresh, the dried. Um, and, that's and those are also uh, less expensive than buying Absolutely. things that are already prepared. Um, Anupa, Sing Anupi Singla, thank you so much for stopping by. Congratulations uh, on this career switch. Good for you. Thank you. And you can find out more about Anupi Singla and her book, The Indian Slow Cooker, 50 Healthy, Easy, Authentic Recipes by going to our website at wttw.com slash Chicago Tonight. There you will also find some recipes. And that's our show for this Wednesday night. I hope you join us tomorrow night live at 7. Is an election really the best way to pick judges? We'll hear both sides of that debate. And with the Blackhawks ready for their season opener, Jeffrey Baird tells us how the team got its name. Now for all of us here at Chicago Tonight, I'm Phil Ponce, and I thank you for watching. Good night.